Uh, so, I mean, growing up, you're always an immense Tampa, you know, a big Tampa Bay sports fan. You know, you played a bunch of sports. Was soccer, like, always the number one sport for you? Uh, it wasn't. You know, for me, soccer, honestly, was probably my third favorite, third or fourth favorite sport when I was growing up. I played, you know, I really loved baseball. I really loved basketball. I, uh, I played a little bit of football, and th I didn't play football for too long, but I really loved that, too. And there was actually a little bit of time when I was younger that I that I quit playing soccer so that I could play football. So I think as I got older and I had to settle down and, and concentrate on one sport, it was pretty clear that soccer was the one that I had the best chance of, you know, going to college because that was my goal to to try to get a scholarship. So that's what that's what led me to soccer, but it definitely wasn't my, you know, my my only path or my only passion when I was growing up. Yeah, so, I mean, you mentioned that, and then you actually go to University of South Florida. You lived your dream of becoming a college soccer player. So what was that, you know, experience like at South Florida where you really a stir after your freshman season, you know, national attention in your senior season? Kind of describe that process as a college athlete. Uh, it was cool because, you know, at first it was tough when you're not playing. You come in as a freshman and – you're getting used to playing with older guys now and guys that have been there and are a little bit more established. So it took me a little bit to figure out where I fit in, you know, trying to work my way to get onto the playing field. But then once I started playing and to be able to play for my hometown school and, you know, to help the team win the big East and eventually start gaining that national attention, it wasn't something that I ever thought would happen with my playing career. If I'm being honest, I was really happy just to be playing for a collegiate team. And I thought that was a, a really great accomplishment. But then as I started playing and started getting that na national recognition, it, it turned into, you know, more of a dream of playing professionally. And, and as that national attention started coming, it's, it's just something in my mind that I kept working forward that was able to accomplish. And I mean, as a collegiate athlete, I know a few personally, how do you really manage, because it's a tough schedule, how do you manage academics and athletics? So when you, if you're lucky enough to, to get a scholarship or, or to be on a sports team in college, they do a really good job of helping you balance your time. And, you know, college is a great time for you to learn to grow up. Yeah. You know, if uh, your parents aren't there to kind of hold your hand and make sure you're getting your stuff done. So the combination of the athletic departments that help you and, you know, kind of having to do that, you got to grow up on your own and you got to learn how to manage your time and make the smart decisions. It kind of helps you balance that schedule out. And, you know, you want to end up going to so you got to go to school. Yeah, so you mentioned going places. After college, you do get drafted 14th overall to Real Salt Lake. You ultimately don't sign to them at first. So what's that process like going from a high, the highest of all highs to a pretty bit significant low in your career? Yeah, it was tough. It was very challenging because especially, like you said, I was getting all that national recognition and I was expecting to, you know, be drafted to an MLS team and get on a roster. And, you know, that's kind of how I drew it up. But, you know, I always like to think that the setbacks in my career, especially that moment, it's always a learning opportunity. And, you know, when you have a plan and you have a path and you get a little bump in the road, like, like I dealt with, it's just a good opportunity to, you know, regroup, carve out a new path for yourself. And if I wasn't good enough to make the MLS roster that I was drafted to, you know, it was a learning lesson for me that I had to, I had more to learn. I had, there was more work to be done. I had to go to the team, the Tampa Bay Rowdies to, you know, get that experience, get games and, and really improve my play. So for me, it was a nice learning lesson that even though people are telling you you're really good and, you know, you expect things to, to kind of happen and kind of fall into your lap a little bit, an opportunity to regroup, refocus, and work on the things you can work on so that you can reach your goal. And you, me you mentioned all this stuff, and at the Rowdies, you weren't the original starter. Uh, the other goalkeeper gets injured, and then you come in, and then next season you lead him to a soccer ball. You save three penalty kicks against the now Minnesota United FC. First off, I mean, what's that experience like in a penalty shootout in one of your biggest games of your career, and you saved three. Describe your mindset throughout that. I was very excited. <laughs> it was, you've yeah. done your research, which is great, man. Uh, I was very, very excited, and, you know, especially because I got to do it in my hometown. 
So I had my youth coaches there, the coaches that helped me when I was your age. I had my college coaches there. I had all my family there. So to be able to have that moment with the hometown, especially with all the people that helped me along the way, it was, it was really exciting. It was really cool. And, uh, you know, I've, I've come up to the MLS and I've had some MLS moments too, but that one is definitely really high on my, on my career accomplishments because to share that moment with the city that you're from and all those people that really supported you all the way. It, it was a, it was a very cool feeling. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. So, I mean, you have that great moment with the Rowdies and then you go back to Real Salt Lake because they uh, own your MLS rights. So describe the transition of going back to Real Salt Lake again and playing in the MLS. It was cool because it was one of those things where I don't know if they remembered me as well. The players in the locker room remembered me as the guy that came in for, you know, 12 days and, and was released and went away for two years. But for me to come back in with a little bit more, you know, feeling a little bit more comfortable and, and coming off of that really good season that I had, it was good for me to get back in the locker room with the people that I felt comfortable with because they were all really nice to me the first time around. So to slide back into that locker room and, and have an idea of who the players were and know who the coaches were because I had spent time with them previously, it just made me feel really comfortable. And that's something that I didn't have the first time around. And I'm not sure if I would have had that if I had gone to another team. And with Real Salt Lake, you win the Western Conference uh, Championship and, you know, you've won a lot of things in your career. So, I mean, does it ever get old? Like, how do you feel after winning all these trophies? Oh, man, I wish I could win them all, man. Yeah. Winning never gets old. That's, uh, yeah. you know, the feeling of winning and the excitement of sharing that with your teammates. And if you're lucky enough to win a trophy, that's what really keeps everybody going. And, you know, that's the motivation for for, you know, all the sacrifices that we have to make. And yeah. it's uh, winning. If winning ever got old, then I would stop playing. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, we also like that altitude up there. That makes it tough for away opponents. So it's got to help you guys out a lot. So um, with so after we also like get traded to the team that you beat in the soccer ball, Minnesota United FC. So things come full circle again for you. And then you get traded to Colton Timbers. What's the process of being traded? Not once, but twice, pretty much in the same day, like... It was pretty scary, to be honest, because I was checking my phone, just waiting for updates and kind of seeing what was going on. And I had heard rumors that if Minnesota picked me, they were going to trade me to Portland. So when Minnesota picked me up, I was calling my wife and telling her, you know, we're going to Portland. Get excited. We're going to Portland. And it took about seven to ten days for me to hear anything from anybody. So I didn't hear from Minnesota. I hadn't heard from Portland. So, you know, I'm, I'm waiting, trying to figure out where my family is moving to. So for that little bit of time, it was pretty uh, nerve wracking not to know where your life is going to end up. But I'm really happy to be traded to Portland. Uh, Minnesota is a great organization, but I think it worked out really good for me. And to be part of the Timbers is something I'm really excited about. And I mean, you mentioned the Timbers. I could see behind you the, uh, the log over there. I actually met Timber Joey, so he's a great guy. I mean, his dad's great, too. What's it like to play for really? You play for a historic franchise in the Rowdies. What's it like to play for another one in the Timbers? It's great. You know, I, I I'm from Florida, so there's not a ton of soccer people. It's more college football. Yeah. And you know, the way that I describe, uh, the way that I try to describe the MLS before I even got traded to the Timbers was that you have to go see a game in Portland, and if you go see a game in Portland, you'll fall in love with soccer because the environment and the atmosphere and how passionate all the fans are and the city about the Portland Timbers, it's fun. It's infectious. It's, you know, it's, it's, you get into it, you're excited about it. So to be a part of the team and be one of those guys that they're actually cheering for and supporting, you know, supporting every time we're on the field, it's, it's great. You know, I feel very blessed and very lucky to be part of this uh, organization. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Portland, you know, talk about how great of an organization it is. And the fans, like, what's, what's it really like? Like, describe the home field advantage when you got Timber Joey over there cutting the log and you got all these fans, you know, <laughs> singing. Is there, like, a significant home field advantage because of that? I think so. I think the cool thing about when you play for when you play for Portland is you know that every time a team shows up to Portland, that it's a big game for them mm -hmm. because of the fans, because of the environment, because of the atmosphere – you know, teams show up to Portland and they want to do their best to make the fans be quiet. Mm -hmm. So for us, when you're playing, when you're playing in that type of environment every single weekend or every home game, 
it's exciting and it, it you know you want to do your best for the city you want to do your best for the fans because they bring it every single game so it's easy to get up it's easy to get excited and when every single time you step on your home pitch it feels like a massive massive championship game you know that's the type of environment you want to play for and that's the type of stuff you dream about when you're a kid and talking about championship games you actually went to one with portland the mls cup which we were talking about before um how we met before but i mean you you lose the mls cup and we mentioned you winning kind of how like how were you feeling after a pretty significant loss to atlanta in front of seventy three thousand people yeah it was tough you know to be honest it right after the game it was okay because uh it was just kind of the end of the season and of course you want to be you want to be enjoying that moment you want to be lifting the trophy and I think that the real sadness and the magnitude of the loss and, you know, everything that kind of comes with that hit me a little bit later in the year. But right after the game, it was just one of those things where we knew we lost, um, you know, the way that the game went. It wasn't very dramatic. There wasn't, um, you know, you could kind of see it coming, I guess. Once they scored the second goal, we, I knew that it was going to be pretty hard for us to climb back in. So I think that right after the game, it was a little tough to swallow because you want to be celebrating. But at the same time, it, it didn't really hit me until about two or three weeks later, just, uh, you know, how much better it would have been winning that thing and how much more fun it would have been to win. But, you know, at the end of the day, we had a really great season. It came down to it came down to 90 minutes. And, you know, with soccer, anything can happen on any given night. So if we had the opportunity to play them again, I think that we would have a good chance to beat them. But for whatever reason, it just wasn't our night. Yeah, I mean, Atlanta United that season, too, was one probably the best MLS team of all time. So to come, you know, from the five seed in the playoffs, like I think that to the MLS Cup playing that team, you know, it's always going to be tough. And now in Portland, you, uh, your wife and your father-in-law have started your, you know, book, uh, it had to be told, a book publishing company, you know, children's books about sports and everything, which I've read a few. They're great. So if you want to go read them, you should go read them. Uh, I'll link everything in the description. Uh, so what was really what, what was your why like I should start this book publish, publishing company? Well, you seem like you seem like a man who loves sports too, yeah. right? Yeah, you have to. Yeah, so I just love sports and for me with sports, I think about family, I think about kind of the bond that uh, going to sporting events and falling in love with sports with your you know with your dad or your mom or your family as a whole that just the types of memory that that creates. And, you know, you talked about you were in the you were in the elevator with your dad after the MLS Cup final. And I'm sure that that's a memory that you'll never forget going to that game with your dad and having that memory. So for me, I wanted to create children's books that retell those moments in sports history. So, you know, those big games that you go to or those big games that, you know, for example, we have a book about the Cubs. And forever, the Cubs weren't supposed to win the World Series, right? It was, you know, grandparents, parents, just years and years of suffering. And once they finally won the World Series, you know, it kind of hit me that it's important for, you know, the older generations of fans to be able to share those stories with their kids, be able to share that passion and what those moments really meant to them. And so when I had my daughter, I had the idea to write her a book. So I had the idea to write these stories in books that are nursery rhymes, they flow, the artwork's really fun, so that that way it's a book that the parent will really love to read to their kids so that they can retell the story, but it's also a book that the kids will fall in love with too, so that hopefully it helps create that bond and helps them fall in love with the same team so that they can share those memories together. Yeah, so I mean, I read one about the Cavaliers, which is pretty nice, because I felt like I was reading, you know, it was rhymery, and I was, I was kind of, you know, I was enjoying it, you know, it was kind of bringing back some old memories. Uh, do you have any books kind of, you know, in your head that you might be publishing soon? So I have a bunch written in my computer, but we're not sure which one's going to be next. So uh, I won't break that news on here. I wish I could, but, yeah. you know, I don't want to get anybody too excited. But we have the five, we have the five books now, four of them are sports based and, you know, our company is called It Had to Be Told because those are the stories that we feel like we have to pass down. And uh, maybe you and I could talk after the show and figure out some sort of discount code or something for your listeners if they want to if they want to move if they want to purchase them. But you know, we'll uh, we'll figure that out after the show so that we can take care of the people that are listening to your show. Yeah, and um, 
So with all of this, I mean, how do you really handle being an entrepreneur on the side and a professional soccer player and your podcast, which I was listening to with um, Zarek Valentin, who I also met. I took a selfie with him, which I have. I might put it up on the screen if I, you know, if I can mm-hmm. find it. But um, he was a great guy. So how do you manage all, doing all this at once? Yeah, Zarek's awesome, isn't he? He's yeah. really fun. You know, um, I just like to keep busy, and I think I love sports. You know, I love to play sports. I love to talk about sports. I love to write books about sports. So for me, it's 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 all fun. You know, it's a way to it's a way to keep myself busy. It's a way to continue to do what I love. And you know, one day I hope to be doing what you're doing. So you know, it's good to it's good to stay busy and keep practicing your other skills, so that once once your playing days are over, you're able to kind of step into that next phase of your life and be just as excited about it. Mm-hmm. So I mean. Overall, you really do it all as an MLS, uh, you know, athlete off the field, on the field. So what's your biggest advice for players, you know, kids like me, kind of my age, trying to become pro? What's your words of advice for them? My words of advice would be to take it step by step. You know, I think nowadays there's a lot of pressure on kids to think about being a professional at a young age or think about being in college at a young age. But you know, for me, I just try to take everything step by step. It, do well, do well in your game, do well on your practice. And if you're doing the right things every step of the way, then the rest of it will kind of fall into place. If you get too concentrated and fixated on your end goals, then little things along the way, you're not going to see them as lessons. You're going to see them as things that are going to really stress you out. And, and then that's when you kind of lose that love of the game. So just take everything step by step. If you love doing it, just remember that you're doing it because you enjoy doing it and it's fun. And, you know, if you're working hard and doing the right things, everything else will just kind of fall into place. Yep. Well, I mean, this is the interview, so um, it's really been great talking to you about your career and the books and everything. So you're really the do-it-all guy. So uh, thanks, Jeff, for being on the show, and um, I hope to talk to you maybe, you know, another time. So thank you. The the next cup final I see you at, we're going to win. Yeah, you better. Yeah. All right, all right. right, See you, man.